Hi guys, today we're gonna to be making another Christmas cake, this time a polar bear face. And this is the third video in my series of Christmas videos that I've made for this year. If you haven't checked the others out yet, do have a look at them. So we're gonna try and keep it fairly simple. I'm gonna use a fruit cake for mine, but you don't have to. You can replace with a sponge cake if you prefer. So if you're using a fruit cake, a dome shaped one's ideal, then you're not having to carve a cake to the dome shape because a fruit cake's quite difficult to carve. Um, I am gonna fill any holes that are in the fruit cake because sometimes they're not very smooth. I'm gonna fill them in with a bit of marzipan and place them on a small disc. My other disc was too big. For those of you that watched the other videos, you'll be like, oh, this beginning bit's exactly the same. I did just film the fruitcake being marzipan just once. So it is the same bit of footage in each video at the beginning because it's the same starting point that we use for each of our face cakes in the Christmas series. So we covered it in a thin layer of marzipan, which is stuck to our fruitcake with a bit of apricot jam. So I'm going to start by adding this one to a baseboard. I'm just making sure it's a good few inches bigger than my actual cake. Now my cake's six inches. Before I add um, my sugar paste, I'm just going to add a bit more marzipan now. I love marzipan. I can't get enough of marzipan. So for me, the more the better. But I know not everybody does. So this bit's fairly thick in marzipan. Then it's ready to add a layer of sugar paste or fondant. This time we're going to try a bit of the Cake Duchess sugar paste, which smells really good. It's fairly firm sugar paste, so it should make it nice and easy for me to use. I just have to break it into smaller bits to knead it with it being nice and firm. It feels really nice and smooth. So I'm going to roll it out big enough that I can cover my cake. But can you see I've been able to roll it quite nice and thin, so there shouldn't be too much fondant on this one, although I've put a lot of marzipan on. And we're just going to press it into the mouth area using the balling tool, and then I'm going to rub gently everywhere else with my hands. And I have cleaned my hands. I know sometimes people comment that I'm not wearing um, gloves. When I'm decorating, I find it difficult to wear gloves when I'm doing anything that's with fondant or icing because um, I can't feel what I'm doing very well. Um, but I assure you, I have washed my hands. So we're just working a bit more on pushing the mouth area in, making sure I've got that shape right, kind of under the nose area, just in there like that. So just the corner of the mouth, just pressing lightly with a balling tool. Then we're going to add a big black oval piece of sugar paste where I've kind of pressed it down into a little bit of a point at the bottom and that's going to go on our nose. We're going to take another piece of black fondant and we're going to push that down flat into the mouth area. Then we want a round ball of pale pink that was pushed into the mouth. So make sure it doesn't fully fill the mouth. We'll put a line down the middle of it. Now for the eyes on this one, I'm thinking keep them fairly simple. So not too detailed. We're going to go for little round balls. So I'm going to mark where I want them to go with my fingers just gently. So think about that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the little eye socket in properly with my ball in tool. So I'm going to make my eye about the size of that hole that I've put in with the ball in tool. So just to open the hole up a tiny bit wider. And we're just going to fill that with a round ball of black fondant. And I think actually the other one will do white. We'll do it winking. So we'll put a tiny little crease line, a couple of crease lines above the nose. And then on my winking eye, the white one, we'll roll a thin piece of black and we'll just lay that over the top, kind of halfway over. Let's give it some tiny little eyebrows. So it's just some small pieces of black sugar paste again. And let's just rouge the cheeks slightly. So we've just got some pink edible dust. If you go a bit bright with it, like I have done, and you want to tone it down, use some corn flour and just dust some corn flour over the top. I'm going to take a little piece of white to place on the nose on this one for a bit of a highlight, and then a tiny little dot of white in the eye. Then we're going to put a little bit of pink just on the top of the tongue, so it's a slightly darker pink than what I've used on the tongue, so it just gives me a nice bit of shading. And let's get our ears ready. So just a ball that's squished down a little bit flatter, that's cut in half. Then we're going to kind of hollow or press down kind of the center a little bit. Okay, I'm not going to stick them on just yet because I want to ice my board first. So because I haven't pre-iced the board, we're going to ice around the head. So I need a long, thin strip. I just cut one edge straight to neaten that off. Then what we're going to do is we're simply going to place it around the board, going around the head, just being careful that it doesn't crease. And we'll have it meet at the bottom. So where it's just cracked a little bit on the edge there, so just roll it a bit to get rid of that crack. But we're going to cut it at the bottom edge, can you see, under the face. Then we're going to trim off anything that goes beyond the edge of the board. And the line where we've cut it, we're going to cover with our polar bear's body. So let's put on our ears. So just deciding the height I want them to go. Or maybe add a little bit of pink to the middle. And then we're going to push those on nice and tight in place. So for the body, I'm just taking a lump of my sugar paste, thinning it a little bit at the edges, cut a little curve out where I want the head to go, 
have a look, see if I like that size. I'm thinking a bit wider, so I'm just going to stretch that wider. And then I'm going to cut off anything that goes below or beyond the edge of that board. Just give him some arms. So like some big teardrop shapes, I think. So we'll have one facing downwards, so we'll cut off anything that goes beyond the edge of the board. I'm thinking the second one maybe up to the face. So I've kind of flattened the paw area a little bit so it doesn't stick out too much. Let's put some little lines in for the paw. And let's stick it up from the body towards the mouth. I'm thinking maybe we'll go in a bit thinner for a wrist. Although I'm not sure polar bears have wrists. Oh, they don't look like they have thin wrists like this, but it's fine. It's cartoony. Play around with where you want the hand to go. Once you're happy with the positioning, stick it down with a little bit of water. Then let's finish it off with a nice red bow. So I've just got some red sugar paste. We're going to put around the neck. Just make sure it's not too big. Put some little crease lines in with my Dresden tool. And let's cut some little ends of the bow. So just some little strips. I'm not too worried about the top end being tidy at the moment because our bow is going to cover it. So we're going to take a strip. Let's make it in two halves. Let's fold each half in half again. And then kind of fold it together, pinching it together at the bottom. Cut a bit of the bulk off the back if you need to. And then we'll just put a little oval in the middle there. Maybe even a little crease or two. There he is, all finished. So this is the third one in my Christmas series. If you want to watch the others, please do check them out on my YouTube channel. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.